God's Spirit came on him. I'm amazed that the Spirit of God comes on me. Are you amazed that the Spirit of God comes on you? Woo, hallelujah to the Lamb. It's a miracle of God against all odds. I want you to help me to preach. Look at your name and say, God's got a plan for you. Or do you think about how you got here? Think about your history. Think about what you're going through right now. Think about everything. Think about who you are in your character. Think about your personality. Think about all your failures. But God has a plan for you. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Against the odds. And we're going to see his, his lack of understanding of the scripture. His, the fact that he wasn't taught in his home by his parents the word of God. The fact that he wasn't under authority because there was no king in Israel in those days. Are y'all with me here today? The fact that he wasn't altogether a pure worshiper of God. Those things caused him to make some mistakes. Amen. And he still had to live with those mistakes. But I'm going to tell you today that I'm going to show you that by the grace of God Almighty... That where he failed, you don't have to. Is everybody awake? <clears throat> Even with God's Spirit on him, this man made a mistake. He opened his mouth. He said something useless and stupid as he possibly could. Because he was trying to manipulate God. It wasn't enough that the Spirit of God had come on him. It wasn't enough that the Troops had gathered around him. He goes and he makes a vow to God that was useless. That was stupid. That was pagan. That was forbidden by the word of God. And that vow was to offer as a burnt offering. The first one that comes out the door if he wins the battle. He's trying to manipulate God. He's trying to get God to do what He wants Him to do by making a vow. God, if you do this, I will do that. Are y'all with me today? So this, if you will, this good man, because the Spirit of God was on him, made a horrible mistake. And it's because authority wasn't in his life. It is because he didn't understand, didn't have a knowledge of the Word of God. It was because he wasn't a true worshiper of God. God still used him, but he made some mistakes. <clears throat> so tonight, today, I'm going to preach to you that God's got a plan for your life. But your past doesn't have to affect your future. But it can if you don't submit yourself to God's will. Amen. To the authority that is in your life. Woo! Come on, somebody. If you don't get a knowledge of the Word of God, if you don't submit to authority in your life, then what's going to happen is there will be a course that will be set in your life, a course for sin that will produce terrible outcomes and terrible things. And so the Bible says the Spirit of God's on him. God brings victory, and it tells us the victory in only a couple of verses. So the victory is not the main point of the story. What I'm about to share with you is the main point of the story. And it is supposed to disturb you. It's supposed to disturb me. You have to remember this man's anointed by God. He is a judge. He's won battles uh, in victory by the power of God. He moved from one place to the other because the Spirit of God gave him that ability to be like a, if you will, an elite force man. But yet with all of that, it wasn't enough for him. He was insecure. And so what he does is he seeks to strike up a deal with God in his insecurity. God, your spirit's not enough. The victory that I see here is not enough. Uh, or, or the men that I see here fighting me is not, with me is not enough. God, I want a guarantee. I want security. So God, I want to make a deal with you. Amen. And God, if you'll do this, I'll do this. The problem is the deal he made with God goes against the Scripture. 
Come on. So the Bible tells us. Now, I want you to understand the vow that he's about to make was not rash. It wasn't like just a, a rash decision, you know. It was a sign of real devotion. But the problem is it was a sign of real devotion that's used by pagans, not by God's people. Amen. 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 And so the Bible says in verse 30, Jephthah vowed a vow unto the Lord and said, If thou wilt fail, without fail, deliver the children of Ammon into my hands. See, he's striking up. But didn't it say the Spirit of God was on him? Didn't it say armies had gathered there to help him? That's all he needs. But it's in his security. He makes a stupid, stupid vow and a useless vow. It's not needed. God didn't ask him to do it. It wasn't God's will for him to make this vow. It wasn't God's will for him to do it. In contrast, remember God told Abraham to offer his son? God said it was God's will for Abraham to offer his son. But what did God do? He stopped it. He was proving Abraham's devotion to him. God told him to do it and then God stopped it because he knew what he was going to do. But nowhere in the scripture does the Bible say that God told Jephthah to offer his firstborn to God. He did it on his own. It was selfish. It was stupid and it was useless. And I'm going to tell you why. Again, because he didn't have the authority of God. There was no king in Israel in those days. He wasn't a true worshiper of God and he didn't understand the scripture. Deuteronomy 12 forbids that to happen. Okay? Amen. Say amen. amen. So he says in verse 31, Then it shall be that whatsoever cometh forth of the doors of my house to meet me, when I return in peace from the church of Ammon, surely, the, surely be the Lord's, and I will offer it up for a burnt offering. Notice, he didn't say God told him to do it. He said, this is my plan. It's based on selfishness. I have to have the victory. I've got to get what I want at all costs. And so the Bible says, So Jephthah passed over again the children of Ammon to fight against them, and the Lord delivered them into his hands. It would seem like that God has put his approval on that vow, right? No. God wasn't putting his approval on the vow. God was going to do that. In spite of the vow. But God gave him victory. And the Bible says. He smote them from Aurora. Even till they come unto Mineth. Even twenty cities under the plain of the vineyards. With a great slaughter. Thus the children of Ammon were subdued before the children of Israel. And Jephthah came to Mizpah unto his house. Remember the vow. And behold his daughter came out to meet him. With timbrels and with dances. Why did he do this? Because he didn't have a knowledge of the word of God. <clears throat> That's forbidden. Deuteronomy 12, 31 forbids it. He's going to do what he's going to do. Leviticus 27 also says he had options. Because the Bible says if you, if you make a vow relating to a human being, you can redeem that person with 20 shekels of silver. He had options to get out of this vow. You with me? Number one, it wasn't according to the word of God. Number two, God, Leviticus 27, gave a way out. Watch what happens. So remember, he made the vow that whoever comes out of his house, that he would offer them as a burnt offering to God. Human sacrifice. Child sacrifice. In the ancient culture, you will see the reason why. See, he's motivated by pagan ideas. In the ancient culture, you will, there have been people, archaeologists, who have found urns that had the bone, burnt bones in them. Certain societies, I mean urns, countless number of urns, with these burnt bones inside of them and in the same pot, the name of the false god that the child was burnt to. So this man... Is moving according to the way that the world does things in that day. That if you get desperate. You say to deity. I will devote my 
firstborn to you. I will sacrifice them and burn them. Amen. Out of desperation. It happened all the time in the pagan world. And so here comes this little girl. We know she's probably three to four years old. She's been weaned all the way up to maybe 13 or 14 years of age because she's not yet married. Daddy comes home from war. God has given him the victory. The Spirit of God had come upon him against all odds. He made this foolish vow to God and as soon as he gets there, the one that came out of the door to meet him was his only child, his daughter. Three to, thir- three to 13, three to four to 13 or 14 years of age, she comes out and she's dancing and she's playing tambourines and she's happy to see daddy. She's welcoming daddy home with joy. Just a happy young lady. Daddy's come home from battle. Daddy's victorious in battle. And so now she runs out to meet him. And she's so happy and so full of joy. And playing the tambourine. Hello daddy. I'm so glad you're home. Love you daddy. Glad you made it out of the battle. She doesn't know as a nameless little girl. That her daddy had made a foolish vow. That he would burn the first thing that came out of his house as a sacrifice to God. I don't know where Jephthah's mind is, brothers and sisters. What did he think was going to meet him when he got there? When You know, he's making this vow that whatever comes out the door, that that's what he's going to offer. Did he think his pet parakeet's going to fly out the door? Did he think his cat's going to walk out the door? Or or his dog was going to meet him? What did he think was going to come out the door? His daughter came out. She's dancing. She's happy. She's full of joy. Hello, Daddy. Glad you're home, Daddy. You know how children can be. When Daddy comes home, they get so excited. They'll run up and grab Daddy, grab him around the legs. and Hey, Daddy, you know, praise the Lord. Just so happy and celebrating. Daddy's here. Daddy's home. Hallelujah. You know, kind of like some of these military people that come from the fields or whatever, you know, a battle. And they come home and the family's there and the children, you can see them running up there and grabbing daddy, especially if it's a surprise, you know. They didn't know he was coming home. And here he is. And so the children are wrapping themselves around daddy's legs and they're hugging each other. This is that little girl. His only child. Happy to see daddy. Celebrating. Leaping up with joy. Doesn't even call her by name. Doesn't know that her father made that vow to God. Brothers and sisters, let me explain something to you. If we don't have authority in our life, if there is no king in Israel, we do what's right in our own eyes. And there are good people. There are people who have the Holy Ghost on them and in them. And they're good people. But we can make bad decisions if we don't have proper authority in our life. If we don't have pure worship of the Lord in our life. If we don't have, amen, a knowledge of the scripture that we should have. We will make decisions that can lead us down a path of destruction. Even with God in our life. Amen. And so here we go. What's he going to do? Well, if he knew the word of God, he would know he's got an option to get out of this. Question for you before I finish the story as I come to a close. Do you think he went through with it? Do you think that he sacrificed her as a burnt offering to God? Well, he had some options. Number one. If you make a vow to God, if you don't keep that vow, you can bring a curse on your head. And he knew that. First option could be, amen, instead of sacrificing his baby girl, the first option is say for him to be, if he wasn't such a selfish daddy, 
He could have said, I will take the curse on my head. I'm not killing my dad, my daughter. So I accept the judgment of God upon my head. But he was a selfish daddy. Secondarily, Leviticus 27 gives him a way out. If he had known the Bible, if he had known the word of God, which he didn't, says that you could redeem a human being that had been vowed to God with money, 20 shekels of silver. He could have taken that, those 20 shekels of silver and gave them to the Lord and spared her life. That's what some people believe he did. Amen. Or he could go through with the vow that he made. And that is to offer his only daughter as a child's sacrifice to God. Amen. Will, will God allow that to happen? And if he does allow it to happen, why doesn't he intervene? Why is God silent? I've already told you because in, in the 10th chapter, the Bible says Israel were hell-bent on serving other gods. And so God said, I'm done with you. So he doesn't intervene and he's silent even though this goes against God's word. Amen. So what do you think he's going to do? Do you think he's going to take the curse on his own head? Do you think he's going to redeem her with money? Or do you think he will go through with this foolish, stupid, useless vow? Amen. Well, the Bible tells us as he meets this little girl. Verse 35 came to pass when he saw her that he rent his clothes and said, Alas, my daughter, thou hast brought me very low. Thou art one of them that trouble me, for I have opened my mouth. There it is again. He who opens Jephthah. Unto the Lord I cannot go back. He blames the little girl for his stupidity. He says, you created trouble for me today. You brought me to my knees today. He tears his clothes and blames her. Because he's selfish. See, brothers and sisters, God had a plan for him against all odds. And God used him. But his past is starting to affect some of the decisions that he's making. Do you understand? Because there's no authority in his life. No knowledge of the word of God. So his sordid past. Let me explain. He was victimized by his brother. So now he's going to victimize somebody else. Let me say it to you this way. Hurt people hurt other people. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, who ultimately suffers the most when there is not proper biblical authority in the life. A true understanding of Scripture or pure worship unto God. You know who suffers the most? It's women and children that suffer the most. Are you with me? He blames his daughter for it. You brought me very low. Thou art one of them that trouble me. For I have opened my mouth unto the Lord. I cannot go back. Brothers, I said, you understand he had options. He could overcome these obstacles as well. He could overcome these odds as well, but he didn't have authority in his life to direct him. He didn't have a knowledge of the Word of God to direct him. He didn't have true worship of God to help him. So he's going to make a horrible decision. I know you've got the Spirit of God. I know you're a child of God. I know you're a good person. But if you don't have those things in your life, that can lead to horrible, miserable, terrible decisions. That will create major problems in your life. Even good people make bad decisions. Spirit filled people, brothers, all day long. 
Because they're missing something in their life. Authority. A knowledge of the word of God and pure worship. Oh, they've got the spirit. Brothers, what I'm trying to tell you is that God had in place, even in this situation, the ability to overcome all the odds. Every one of them. Even that. Even opening his mouth and getting himself in trouble and condemning him, his own self with his mouth. God 